This pregnant woman was smuggled across the border for the first time. She was locked in a container with her husband, stayed the whole night, waiting for the next morning. The stowaway organizers would only put them on the ship, but at dawn, an accident happened. The door of the container was just opened. All the stowaways poured in like crazy, because there were too many people. The stowaway organizers had to forcefully drag out half of them. They drove them to another container. Mia saw her husband getting into the car through the hole. She hurriedly called her husband to contact him. After confirming that he was safe, she was relieved. But when the car arrived at the pier, it was stopped by customs. It's strange. Obviously the car is full of people. But when the door opened, I found no one inside. Nevertheless, the officer still walked in to check it out himself. Sure enough he soon realized something was wrong. He told his subordinates to come in. He himself went to the front of the car, and then ordered his subordinates to shoot. The Shoot. The officer saw where the bullet holes were. Immediately he knew what was going on. He returned to the end of the wagon, committed himself to the man inside. Come on out. Mia doesn't believe a word he says. She looked up and saw the box above, and climbed up. As the officer loses patience and prepares to order the shooting, the iron door was slowly opened. A girl came out of it, but what greeted her were merciless bullets. Kill them. Mia is hiding up there, trembling with fear, not daring to make a sound. After making sure there were no survivors, the officer asked his subordinates to drag the bodies away, and then clean the carriages. Mia waited until they closed the door before she dared to cry. Then she sent a message to her husband. She told him to hide. Hide. But the wait was long. She never received a reply from her husband. As each container was hoisted onto the freighter, the real havoc had just begun. Mia accidentally found a backpack in the corner. Inside was a power drill and a cell phone. These things were not useful to her for the time being. She just hoped to reach her destination and meet her husband as soon as possible. Who knew that? At night, the ship suddenly shook violently. Mia stood up and looked toward the hole. It turned out that there was a storm outside. The whole cargo ship in the sea bumpy. At any time may be swallowed by huge waves. Mia desperately beat the container and shouted for help. But outside the chaos, no one knows noticed her. Eventually, the ship tilted severely. All the containers on board fell into the sea. The next day. The next day, Mia woke up slowly. She looked through the hole again. She realized that all around her were containers that had sunk into the sea. She couldn't believe it. She looked out through the holes in different places. Sure enough, she was already on the surface of the sea. She wanted to call for help, but the screen of her cell phone was shattered and could not be unlocked. She could only take out her old cell phone from her backpack to try, but without the password, she still couldn't call. At this point she realized that the sea water kept seeping in, rushed to find a tape to seal the hole, to stop further leakage, then began to look for useful supplies in the containers. She opened the first box, and found it was full of reservation boxes, completely useless. Opened the other box. This one is full of sweatshirts. Mia took one out and put it on. The third box is a TV set. The fourth box contains headphones. The fifth box was filled with wine. None of these items are useful to her for the moment. Now there was only one last box left, but this box was hanging in midair. She took a deep breath, continuing to open the next box. This pregnant woman was about to give birth, but she's trapped in a container drifting in the middle of the ocean. This box above is her last hope. She takes a deep breath, using a knife. She cuts the rope, but she but she was disappointed when she pried the box open. It's full of useless plastic containers. Just when Mia was about to collapse, suddenly thought of the seal on the box can be waterproof. So she cut the ceiling strip and plugged the hole to prevent seawater from seeping in again. Then she found a hose from the wooden box with a TV. It served as a drain. Little by little the water drains out. By the end of the day, Mia was exhausted, but she didn't give up calling for help. So she replaced her old cell phone with her own card. But there was no signal and she still couldn't get through. Then, she emptied her backpack and organized her things just in case. Just then, the phone suddenly rang. Mia quickly took out her cell phone to see. The phone is actually her husband called. Mia was thrilled to hear that her husband was still alive. It turns out that the organizers of the smuggling did not send them to the boat. Instead, they threw them off the bus halfway. Mia told her husband about her situation, but in the middle of the ocean she had no idea where she was. Her husband told her to hold on, said he would find a way to come to her rescue. After hanging up the phone, a violent storm was about to hit. Mia suddenly felt a sharp pain in her stomach. Her water had broken. She knew she was in labor and hid in the box, in the bumpy container. Miraculously, the baby was born. After a busy night, she finally got the baby settled, but the cell phone also fell into the water and was completely scrapped. She could only replace the phone card with her own cell phone, but the broken screen can never be unlocked. At this time she saw a side of the electric drill, suddenly came up with an idea. So she took the drill at the top of the container ready to open a window. Busy all day, looked to be a great success. The drill suddenly ran out of power. No way, Mia had no choice but to take out the saw blade from the universal knife and saw bit by bit. She didn't stop until her palms were all worn out. Hearing the child
child's cries, she dabbed a cloth with some seawater to cool the child. Late at night she was awakened by a noise outside. She walks down and looks towards the cave entrance. Suddenly an unknown creature slammed up. Mia fell to the ground in shock. The baby cried out at the sound of the crash. Mia rushed to her feet. She picked up her daughter with one hand. With her other hand, she held a wooden board and slapped it against the iron. Luckily, the iron. Luckily the nameless creatures outside were quickly scared off. Hungry the next day she continued to work, but it didn't take long for the saw blade to wear right through. Mia was desperate. Her water bottle was already empty. She couldn't help but pour some seawater into the empty bottle and tried to drink it all. Luckily she came to her senses in time and poured the water over her head. Then she realized that the top of the container was covered with dew. Mia rushed up to the container and stuck her tongue out to lick the water. But the dew was of no use to her as she hadn't eaten or drank for days. Soon she was hallucinating. She saw her oldest daughter, who had died, coming towards her. Then she saw her husband coming to her. She didn't come to her senses until the rain fell on her face. It was raining heavily outside. The rain saved her life. Mia rushed to get out all the tanks to hold the rain water. When she saw the pull tabs of the cans, suddenly she thought of the way to escape from the container that the woman took the cloth bag and stuffed it inside a gap in the pen. Then with all her strength she desperately pulled it down. Mia will, down. Mia will be after the power is exhausted, like opening a can. She finally opened the pen, seeing the sunshine after a long time. Mia finally cried. She cried tears of joy, trapped in the container for six days. She saw sunshine for the first time. She turned her head to look at her daughter, rekindled hope for life. She carried her daughter to the top of the container, looking at the endless sea. She didn't know what to do next. No food became her biggest problem, but she was lucky. Just when changing her daughter's diaper, she threw the diaper away. I didn't expect the feces on the diaper to scatter. It instantly attracted a large school of fish. Already hungry for a few days, she saw the scene. Instantly incomparable excitement, hurriedly homemade a simple fork ready to fish. But tried dozens of times even a fish shadow did not fork. She was so tired that she vomited on the spot, lay down helplessly and looked at the sky. Suddenly saw an airplane flying over. She rushed back to the container, smashed the TV, took a shard of glass and ran back in a hurry. But because I was in too much of a hurry, I didn't notice the sharp edges of it then. I got a big cut on my thigh. In order to seize this opportunity, Mia endured the pain and held the shard above her head, hoping that under the sunlight, the reflective spots would be noticed by the people on the plane. The result was nothing but a lot of blood. There was no luck. In order to stop the bleeding, she she removed the bedpan from the motherboard on the TV, then a copper wire from the headset, then drank a few mouthfuls of foreign wine, and then poured the foreign wine towards the wound. In the end, in the end Mia endured the pain, sewed out the wound a little bit. Afterwards, she looked at the messy earphone wires, suddenly came up with an idea. She connected the threads together to make a unique fishing net. The next morning, she put the fishing net into the water, then threw down the diaper, then lay down on top of the container and waited for the fish to take the bait. Not long after the fish were attracted, one of them did take the bait. She couldn't she couldn't care less to eat it directly raw. After replenishing her strength, Mia's will to live was rekindled. From the ninth day onwards, she gradually got used to the sea life. The water bottle was converted into a drain. It is more convenient to use. She also wrote down many notes of distress, packed into a plastic box as a drift bottle and threw it into the sea, hoping that one day someone would find them and come to their rescue. Every day, she catches more fish than she could eat. At night, they even talked to their daughter and sang to her to put her to sleep. But that night, Mia's cell phone suddenly rang. Mia's cell phone suddenly rang. She carefully pressed the answer button. Finally, she could hear her husband's familiar voice again. Mia thought she was saved, but her husband said he couldn't come to pick her up. He told Mia that she would have to figure it out on her own. He asked Mia to promise him to live on. The husband said he had done his best. He almost said he was sorry for Mia. It turned out that her husband had smuggled her here to save her. Unexpectedly, he was discovered. He was accidentally shot during his escape. He knew he was no longer able to make it. He called to say goodbye to Mia. Mia was already sobbing uncontrollably, but she held her tongue as she told her husband about the birth of her daughter. Finally, Mia said the words that she and her husband had vowed to each other. The vow. Yo te quiero más que Tomorrow, after that, the cell phone turned off automatically. That night Mia cried for a long time alone on top of the container. But for the sake of her daughter, she had to be strong and live on the 24th day at sea. Mia could no longer stop the seawater from seeping in. On the 26th day, the water level of the container reached the highest point. It could sink at any time. Fortunately, she was prepared. In advance, she made a simple raft out of a plastic box. The daughter's crib tied to it ready to escape. That night, the container's sealed bag was washed open by the sea. Mia tried to go down to plug the hole, but her ankles got caught in the cloth. 
At that moment, a large amount of seawater rushed in. The container sank rapidly. When Mia untangled the cloth and escaped, she found that her daughter had disappeared. She desperately called out her daughter's name as if she was crazy. Fortunately, a whale swam by. The water spouted out just in time to splash her daughter's face. Mia heard her daughter's cries and swam desperately over to her. She stayed by her daughter's side until dawn. By now Mia is exhausted. She used her last ounce of strength. She threw all the leftover fish into the sea. Then she said to her daughter, Fine. Shortly, a flock of seagulls are attracted by the fresh fish, hovering above them. This scene was just seen by fishermen not far away. The fishermen immediately drove their boat over. Eventually the mother and daughter were successfully rescued.